Welcome to NASPA Tonight. I'm your host, Josh Greenway. This is the weekly Facebook live show where we talk about all things Scrabble. We've got, um, number one, I want to tell people, you may be watching this on my personal Facebook page uh, or feed, um, the NASPA uh, page or the NASPA group. So the way this works is the same feed goes to all three places, uh, but the comment threads are a little bit different. Um, so where we tend to see the most comments is on the NASPA group. Crane has just said that he is so excited for what he has no idea. So let's jump right into the comments. Uh, sorry, let's jump right into the content and show Crane what he is excited for. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about tonight is where we are on the NASC. So um, things continue to, uh, uh, registrations continue to happen for the NASC. We're certainly on track for the uh, kind of lowest attendance at NASC. The last time we were in Reno, our numbers were 350. At the price increase deadline this year, um, we were looking at, I think, 271. That number's since grown to 294. We're definitely going to end up over 300, uh, but we're going to fall short of the last time we were in Reno, 2015, of 350. I've stated my position on this before. Um, I think this was entirely kind of predictable. The This uh, event was scheduled late. Obviously, there's the much discussed conflict with the other competitive Scrabble tournament happening that weekend in a place that uh, is more easily served by airlines, uh, certainly from the East Coast. Um, so some players are opting to play in Florida instead of Reno. Um, and what I would say is, number one, I was just with a whole bunch of Scrabble people this last weekend. And there are people who are convinced that NASPA selected this weekend to make this conflict happen. Um, all I can tell you is, is my opinion from talking with the players who made this decision. That was not the motivation, um, making a conflict. Because if you were going to make a conflict for this weekend, you wouldn't choose to do it in Reno, which is a little harder to get to and stuff like that, than where this other event is taking place. The other thing I'm going to say is I'm not super concerned about the fact that we have a few less people than the last time we were in this location and a bunch less people than when we have the event on the East Coast. Um, NASPA tries to service all of its members by moving the event around um, in order to make it easy for different people to get there. So I think that's overall a benefit. Probably if we were in Vegas this year where a deal couldn't be made, we would have seen better numbers. But if we were on the East Coast, I think we would have seen even better numbers. So I'm sure we're going to uh, continue to move the NASC around and we'll see those uh, numbers grow. The other thing I'm going to say is that the NASC, a lot of people think that the number of people at the NASC, NASC is the barometer of success. For me personally, uh, while it's always great to have lots of people, that's like my mission is in life is to bring is is to bring people together. I do that in my job. I try to do that within NASPA. Um, what I would say is that for me, the most important thing we do at the NASC is we name a national champion. That gives us the ability to promote the game, generate media coverage for it, stuff like that. So. Even if, whether the number is 500, 400, 300, I think that we get a lot of benefit from the NASC. So um, that's what I wanted to say about the NASC. We've had something like 23 people join since the price went up. I'm expecting it to go over 300 before the event. And honestly, I can't wait to go. I know not everybody is able to make it. The flights are more expensive. It's a, it's a longer trek for a lot of Scrabble players. Um, but I would suspect that next year we'll be back in a uh, more accessible location. So that's the NASC. 
The next thing that I wanted to talk about was King's Cup. So that happened um, kind of over the past week. I'm not sure of the exact dates, but if you weren't following the coverage, we had this amazing final of, you know, probably lots of people could have predicted this, especially if you were kind of going chalk. Um, we had Nigel winning the King's Cup over Jesse Day. If you don't know what the King's Cup is, is it's a premier event. It is uh, run in the Collins lexicon, and it takes place in Thailand every year, and it's sponsored by the royal family of Thailand. So that's where some of the funding comes from. Um, there are local organizers. John Chu goes over there as, I think, the technical director, and he helps make things go. Uh, there was streaming available all that time. Um, so this was a really cool event, and this is a rematch of the last uh, World Championship uh, with the same uh, same scenario playing out with Nigel besting Jesse Day. Um, and I believe Jesse has stated publicly that it, it's his goal to uh, uh, become the best Scrabble player other than Nigel Richards. So I'm sure he was, I, I could tell from the post that he was making, he's very active over all that time that he's thrilled with his uh, performance that weekend. Um, I've got some more pictures from the event. This is Nigel with the trophy. This is a picture that Sumbul uh, uh, took or had taken. Um, she was also very active and, and providing lots of content for those of us that weren't there. I believe it might have been her first time at King's Cup. I'm not sure. Um, but, you know, look, this is a pretty cool trophy. Um, the next thing that I want to show, speaking of that trophy, I think uh, the player Alex Tan posted this. Uh, he said, life is lonely at the top, something like that. So it looks like he took this picture from an elevator in the airport while Nigel was waiting to board. There he is. There's the trophy. Uh, so I thought that was uh, pretty humorous. Um, more on Jesse for a second. Uh, it, you may have difficulty reading this. I'm going to, I'm going to impart the story. Jesse started out incredibly strong. He went undefeated the first day and, uh, he just, I mean, he was crushing. Um, he put up a personal best, I think over 700 point game during King's Cup and, and was just absolutely crushing it. He took a loss to a up and comer, um, who... Honestly, I don't know much about this player. I, I'm not totally keyed in to. Um, uh, there we go. Actually, that's a good. That's a good point. The royal family does do some level of sponsorship, but Brands is the uh, major sponsor. So this is a sponsored event. So back to Jesse Day. He played this kid named Taryn, who I I think is Thai, but I'm not sure. Again, I'm not totally keyed into all the players on the international scene. And if there's someone who's interested in uh, reporting on this stuff when there's a big event who wants to come on NASPA tonight, please just get in touch with me personally. And uh, I would love to have an international correspondent to help break these things down. Anyway, Taryn, young guy, um, knocks off Jesse Day. And, um, you know, there have been players in our community who get knocked off by a kid or a young person, and they're not that happy. What does Jesse Day do? He uh, congratulates the kid. What this, what you're seeing here is a post on Facebook made by that kid's um, teacher or mentor, I don't know the exact relationship, who posted this message from Jesse immediately after the game that he lost where he praises the kid, he praises the teacher or mentor, um, just couldn't be more humble and sportsmanlike so, uh, you know, look, we've had Jesse Day on the show here a couple of times. Um, I think Jesse Day might still be overseas right now. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but I'm really, I'm, I'm hoping we get Jesse Day on before. Uh, anyway, I'm hoping we'll get him on again soon to talk about this experience. So um, the other, there were a couple of other North American players over there. One of them was a much beloved um, uh, Conrad, here, let me move myself around. That'll make for a better picture. Here's Conrad, where uh, he posted this to his Facebook, and I just grabbed it. 
um, where he says, despite having possibly the worst tournament of my 15-year career, I think he had a run of bad luck there, um, it ended on a super high note when I got to meet and chat with my Scrabble fans, which is just the coolest thing. So this is something that I've heard about from many people. Uh, Jason Brosma, for sure, who's made a couple of trips over to King's Cup. There are, you know, kids playing this game in school and all that kind of stuff who look up to the best international players. And, like, these are legit fans of Conrad's in Thailand. And I, I just think that is awesome. So I wanted to mention that. Um, so I think that is the coverage there for... Um, King's Cup. The only thing I want to say is that I'm hoping to make it to King's Cup at some point. I, I don't play Collins. I would imagine I would go as a player. I would love to go as a, uh, you know, social media correspondent. I don't think there's anybody's going to pay me to do that. Um, so I would probably go to play and then, you know, try to do some, some coverage. I wanted to go this year. It didn't happen. I may go next year. At some point, I'm going to go to King's Cup and it's really considered a, um, a can't-miss event. So that's what I wanted to cover there. Now, the other thing that I wanted to talk about, I just want to make sure I'm catching all comments here. So just give me a second. Um, here we go. Okay, very good. Please, whenever you comment, I, I've got eyes on all of the comment threads. So anything you want to throw in, that would be great. Later on, we're going to be taking a look at doing some predictions for the NASC. So uh, any kind of engagement there is going to be super helpful. Now, what I want to talk about is Albany uh, July 4 tournament. Um, I uh, Obviously, July 4 tournament uh, was run for 24 years, uh, or I guess 23 years. This was the 24th um, by the... Uh, much beloved and uh, amazing Annette Tedesco, who we lost in this past year. And when that happened, um, uh, it was Kieran O'Connor and I who uh, kind of tasked ourselves with carrying on that legacy. And so this was the first of these tournaments that we um, are going to continue on. And this is an ongoing basis. We're committed at this point to run all four of her tournaments, July 4, uh, Lake George, New Year's and Saratoga Springs, and to do that on an ongoing basis. So this is a, a sizable commitment, that's for sure, um, just in terms of time and stuff like that, but I couldn't be happier with the way this first event went. I think a combination of the fact that we um, made part of the tournament into a memorial for Annette, and we had a memorial barbecue. I think that certainly attracted some people. And I think that, as I was saying before, NASC, a little harder to get to, uh, you know, a little more expensive with the, with the cost of flights. So I think um, July 4, in years like that, July 4 makes a, a pretty good alternative. So um, we crushed it on attendance. Um, we last year that tournament did 82 and this year we did 125 um so that was amazing and i, I just really appreciate the players coming out i think it was 115 in the main event and we had you know that means we had 10 people who played early birds who couldn't play the main event which is i think somewhat rare so i wanted to talk about some of the winners but i just wanted to talk about um, my personal experience. Then we'll get to the guests. And <laughs> I'm going on longer. My personal experience was it was amazing to work with Kieran. It was awesome to see all these players. And I'm looking forward to working on these events going forward. So um, now here's what I want to do. I want to show some of these players and give them their props. Um, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to take myself off the screen and make these pictures full screen. This is TWL Division D. And what we're seeing here is um, some of the Division D people, they, they had a true round robin. So some of them left before the end. But Betsy Wood uh, won the division. Cheryl Kagan, you're going to hear more from Cheryl coming out of Reno. She came in second. And Robin Schlock um, came in fourth. So that was a lot of fun. 
Then we've got Division C, uh, where we had, um, who won? I think it was Eric, right? Yeah, Eric picks, uh, Eric got the win. Then we had Lydia in second, Mad in third, Kevin in fourth. And then uh, let's go to Division B. No, that's not Division B. Here's Division B. Um, Division B, we had uh, Zach Ansel just killed it uh, this tournament. He was amazing. Um, Vera Bigel came in second. Um, Bernard came in third. Heidi came in fourth. And Glenn picked up a wins over expectation prize. Um, and then we had Division A. Here we go. And Division A was won by Joey Malik in second place. The awesome uh, Cesar Del Solar. Um, we had uh, the amazing Seth Lipkin come in third. Wes Eddings fourth. Carl Higby fifth. And Joel Horn picking up wins above expectation. And finally, we have the Collins players. And... Here we go, winning, oh, this final was pretty amazing between Chris Leip and Will Anderson. Will had a game and a half lead uh, with two games to go, and Chris swept and was able to pick up the win. So he came in first, Will came in second, Stefan Rao came in third, Keller, J the, the uh, Jason Keller comes in fourth, Sam K comes in fifth, Noel Livermore picks up an over-expectation prize, as does James Clark. So I just want to give a shout out to those players. I'm going to be posting these pictures really soon. I should have done it the, the same night, but it's been uh, pretty busy um, since I got back. So uh, Roger Coleman, uh, as you say, it's not too late to start learning Collins. I ain't learning anything. <laughs> I very rarely play Scrabble anymore, um, but I want to go to Thailand for the experience. Um, I don't Anyway, but thank you, Roger. Okay, here's what we're going to do now. We are going to uh, bring in the first of our two guests. And I want to introduce, this is the first time this guy has been on the show. He has been killing it lately. He's a relatively new player to the scene. Um, I want you all to meet Samuel Kaplan. Sam, how are you? Oh, Very good. I got to put headphones on. How are you, Sam? <laughs> Very good yourself. <laughs> I am fantastic. I'm happy that you are joining me here. I wanted people to meet you. Um, so now, ah, that's hilarious. Sorry. I got to just respond to one of the comments. Bob Bolander said, I took myself <laughs> off, the off the screen, but I was in all the pictures. So that's a, that's a good point, Bob. Okay. I want everyone to meet you, Sam, because I think you're a real interesting character. So number one, you're relatively new to Tournament Scrabble. You've got exactly 105 games under your belt, okay? So for tournament experience, that's like baby level. But yeah. you've, you've been crushing it. You're at 1460. You recently took down two tournaments in a row in Manhattan. I think you said you have five tournament wins. Like I that said, 1460. Now, so that, that profiles all really well. We, you know, we're going to continue to expect to see growth on the board from you and stuff like that. But I'm also interested in some of your background. So when we were talking about this, you have a Bachelor of Science and a Master's degree in Forensic Science. Is that correct? That is correct. Wow. So what? Here's what I want to know: is is what we see on programs like CSI? Is that how accurate is that? Is that what we're talking about when we say forensic science? Uh, somewhat, because what you see on TV shows, basically, you know, cases can be solved in 20 minutes on TV shows, whereas in real life, cases can take years to solve. And some cases remain unsolved to this day. Right. So, right. you know, a variety of analyses are performed in a crime lab, whether it's on TV or whether it's in real life. However, you know, cases can often get to court many years later. And so, you know, on TV, they show certain parts of the investigation and then get right to the courtroom after they show people working in the laboratory. Right. And 
and they show whether the, the defendant is convicted or found innocent. Now, in real life, you know, a crime could happen of any sort, and evidence is collected, and it's taken to the laboratory, and it could take varying amounts of time to actually get the case to trial, depending on the complexity of the case and how much evidence there is, etc. So, to- so that part totally makes sense to me. Here's what my question is: What hmm. drove you to not only get one degree, but then to go get your master's in this particular area? What what is it um, about this that you're attracted to? Oh, I'm really into science and I'm really into the criminal justice system. Mm-hmm. This is the perfect way to tie the two together. And, you know, for me personally, I've always wanted to use my science skills in order to help bring people to justice. Uh-huh. And, so, and so, you know, I've always wanted to use varying sci- various scientific techniques in order to analyze materials that came from crime scenes. And so upon analyzing those materials, I arrived at these conclusions that would aid in investigations. Right. So this is almost like, uh, kind of like following clues, but in the laboratory to, to get to a result. So here's what I want to ask when you're playing Scrabble, is there any, uh, uh, you know, combination of these skills where you're, you're following clues, you're following tells, you're applying analysis to get good results. Do you see any crossover between Scrabble and uh, the work you've done in this forensic science? The biggest similarity that I see personally is that, you know, forensic science is a constantly evolving field. And so it's very important to always keep up with the most recent developments. And so, you know, obviously in Scrabble, you know, the dictionary gets updated every so often. And so it's important to be studying the new words and keeping up there. So, you know, when you think about the similarity between forensic science and Scrabble, it's basically a continuing education. Okay. I like it. I like it. Speaking of continuing education, uh, I assume you have your flight booked because you're playing in your first... NASC, is that right? Coming up in Reno. I am actually not signed up for that. What? Oh, I thought you were playing NASC. Okay, we'll move on. You might have been. You might have been thinking of Joey Kraft. Who might be playing <laughs> no, that. Joey's not, sure not playing. Not. Joey's not oh, playing not, either. No. Neither am I. Oh, okay. I apologize. For some reason, I thought you were on the list for NASC. All right, skip oh. that question. Tell me about. Um, Cornelia Guest being your lucky charm. You you posted about this recently. Mm-hmm. I did. And, you know, while I have one under other directors, which in, in my case happens to be Connie Creed and Judy Cole yeah. at the Big Apple tournament a month and change ago, the reality is, out of my five wins, happened to be under the direction of Cornelia Guest. And so, obviously, while I have gotten a lot better myself, she has played a very major role in my success in her tournaments. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> whatever it is, she is do- she does something right every time that allows me to be a contender in almost every tournament that I've played under her direction. So here's um, what I want to say about that, is mm-hmm. I think Cornelia Guest puts people at ease. If you agree with that, that Cornelia Guest puts people at ease, Throw a comment out there to uh, Cornelia or tag her in the comments. Um, Also, former NASPA Person of the Year, Cornelia Guest. I think that is true, uh, too. I think the reigning NASPA Person of the Year, I'm not sure. She is. Um, When we get to NASC, they'll be announcing the next NASPA Person of the Year. So we'll find out who Hmm. that is. Um, And so let's talk a little bit about the NASC. And what I want to do is I want to bring in our next guest. So Sam, you're going to stick around for this um, because Mm -hmm. we are going to uh, talk to the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, Joey the K. Joey, how are you, man? I am great. Am I here? How's it going, Joey? (laughs) So 
Joey always slow. Oh, okay, gotcha. So okay, maybe things are. Uh, what's that? Okay, it's caught up now. Okay, good. So here's what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, I just want to. I just got to get something ready to go here. Um, first of all, if if you don't know who Joey the K is, you might be relatively new to Scrabble. Joey is, Joey's run off screen, but Joey is an extremely skilled player, um, 2000 rated player, um, who has been taking a little bit of a break from Scrabble. So the first question, Joey, is how's that been going? I'm glad that it finally snapped back in the grid right as you asked me the question. Um, <laughs> so can you repeat the question? Because it was kind of static, but now it's working. Okay, good. So... What we might do, Joey, is have you disconnect and reconnect. But right now, yeah, no, I, I if you can hear me, I if you can hear me, the question is, how has the break from Scrabble been going? Oh, yeah. Um, I guess I wouldn't really characterize it as a break. I just am kind of existing still. Um, so, yeah, I have you know no plans to play. Of course, I don't know if it's a break or if it's just permanent or whatever, but... Whatever it is, yeah, all is good. Um, I still like words. I still do airlift and all that. Um, and I can still beat Jackson Smiley um, in a series, of course. So that's really all that matters. <laughs> Fantastic. And, uh, Joey, I know you haven't met Sam before. Here, Here's Sam here. Have Hello. you caught any of Sam's, like, are you still on cross tables looking at results and stuff like that? Uh, I mean, I pretty much know cross tables on the <laughs> back of my hand, so um, everyone, you know, I know everyone's stuff pretty much. But yeah, I'll learn more obviously about uh, Sam now that I know now that I met him <clears throat> informally. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, here's what we're going to talk about tonight, guys. We're going to talk about the NASC Roto, and if you don't know what that is, um, Joey has either co-organized or promoted. I think you're just promoting it this year. Um, the NASC Roto is for people who aren't able to go to the NASC um, to uh, make some picks as to who's going to come out ahead. So a Roto is like you pick players from different groups and they become your team and then they score points for you as, um, you know, what am I trying to say here, Joey? You you create well, like a, a fantasy team of Scrabblers, right? Give it, Give it to me. Yeah, so I would you say they score points. Really, it's just the tally of wins and spread. Um, so yeah, and it doesn't have to be like for just people that aren't going. Obviously, anyone can play. Um, so Ryan Fisher is uh, who you should have mentioned first. Um, yes. Not really irrelevant, honestly. But yeah, it's just a fun <laughs> thing everyone does every year. Um, you know, people like action on sports and Scrabble. You know, call it a sport, whatever you want. You don't have to call it a sport, but we got action um, and. It's fun for people to play and uh, win prizes and all that. And um, right. yeah, like you said, fantasy sports, uh, that's that's where the future is at. Okay. So let's get into this thing. I'm going to take this right from the site. Here's what we're going to do. They, we're going to show you what it's like to fill out a bracket. Or it's not a bracket, but whatever. To fill out an entry for the NASC Roto, Okay. And the way this is going to work is, Joey, you're clearly the expert when it comes to knowing how these different uh, players interact and stuff like that. Sam and I, um, you know, look, Sam's played 100 games, all right? He's done amazingly well. I only have 1,500 games. Um, so we're the, we're the amateur pickers. And then you're going to come in and give your expert analysis. So here's the way uh, this works. Oh, that's not it. Hold on. Here's the way this works. So I've got this selected. We're going to talk about uh, Division One first here, okay? So I can go through this, and it's like, here's TWL Division One. Here are the 53 players um, who are registered for Division One, and they're split into groups. So it says choose four. So I can choose from... You know, here's group one, here's group two, here's group three, and then group four is kind of everybody else, right? So let's talk about group one. 
We've got, uh, I think it's a, a really interesting mix of players. These are all the 2000 rated players. Um, I want to put some extra focus on this top group, but we're all going to choose one. Sam and I are going to choose one first, and then we're going to then we're going to go over to Joey. But obviously, the number one pick here is a guy who used to appear on this show sometimes. His name is Jackson Smiley, um, and he's the top rated player. But as some of you who have followed the show know, he's spent the last two months out in the wilderness planting trees and so i'm crossing them off the board um my pick for uh this first group is going to be will anderson also uh, i think it's partially winner. cut off i don't see jackson or kenji listed on the thing but they're in that top group really is there a way you can, i think oh I, I oh i see, see what okay yeah i can resize it Hold i only on. see seven yeah. people in the top part of it yeah it uh, seems kind of important but not the end of the world how about right now, now? Is that better? Okay, it's part of Jackson's no. last name. Okay, hold on. Let me get to work on this. Sam, um, okay, hold on a second, guys. Let me get the. I can get this. There you go. Do we see everybody now? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, all right, good. Very good. So... It's a little tough to see. If you want to follow along at home, you want to go to charlottescrabble.com slash roto. Um, so, Sam, who do you think stands out in this group? Who are you a fan of, and who do you want to pick? I'm looking at, right now, either Jackson or Will or Joey Mallet as of right now. Um, you know, I, I see that Joey is coming off a win at the Albany Tournament. Uh, yes. Jack- a lot of experience, um, and he has won a lot of multi-day tournaments in the past. And Will, with him being a past champion, I'd have to go with one of those three. But it's a all right. Well, make a pick. We're asking you to make okay, a pick. Okay, okay, we got to speak okay, of okay. it. Sorry. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> it's a rough one here because they're all very good. Just make a pick. At this right. point, I want to I want to get some uh, serious insight from our expert picker Joey. So make a pick. I'm gonna go with Joey, but it's, it's a really hard call. <laughs> okay, so Joey the K, how would you size up this field and make a pick here? So yeah, a few things. So I already made one team, so I'm not saying go to that section, but on the team section, I do have a team already. Oh, interesting. So you can see what... So before you put in a pick, you can see what other people have picked. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, But anyway, so... Yeah, I always like to do multiple teams because, you know, there's a few sections where where it's like, yeah, I want to pick this person, but I want to pick this person. So you have to kind of do multiple teams sometimes to kind of get that urge that you want to have pick a few different people. You know, you want to spread that love around equally if you want. Um, so I like to make multiple teams, so I definitely will have uh, thematic teams that I'll make moving forward, but I always... What, what are the teams. themes? What are the themes? Usually it's just young players or... Uh, okay, I gotcha. Do, or like, or grizzled veterans or wh- whatever it is. So I want to I wanna, I wanna shout also. out... I want to shout out Adam Henderson here who says, picking this group is easy, uh, and then he lists three people. He, he likes uh, Kenji Jackson and Rafi Stern. And then he says, oh, I suppose Alec as well. So I don't know how easy it is when you pick half the field, but these are some fun players to pick. Joey, where should the smart money go? Who do you think, is there any love for Kenji on this? I mean, Kenji is an yeah. all-time expert, tons of experience, hasn't played a lot recently. What, what do you think of Kenji's chances? Yeah, so I think he has really good chances. Um, smart money would be Will if I have to pick one person. That's who I picked. Okay. Um, that's why I did pick Kenji uh, on the other my other team that I made. But either way, yeah, yeah for me it would be Will one, Kenji two, and Jackson three. Uh, All right. And and I just want to say for the record, that. I just want to say for the record, my heart is with Cesar. So let's go on to Division Two. These are the nineteen hundred players. So who do we like here? We've got. Appel, we've got Cree, we've got Benji, 
um, and a whole host of other, you know, we got Josh Jr., we got Seth, we got Kanek, we've got the other Renke brother, like, we've got uh, Matt Graham, like, there are picks galore here. If I were making a pick, I mean, I gotta say... And Sam, get ready. We can't have a lot of um um in making your pick. I my pick okay. here is going to be to win this group. Well, I, it's hard not to love Seth Lipkin. I'm going to say Seth, but my my heart is with Josh Jr. Uh, how about you guys, Sam? You go first. All right, I'm going to go with Benji. Love it. Benji is uh, is awesome for sure. If you haven't seen, uh, I want to throw out a quick, actually, I meant to do this earlier. Benji's been streaming. Uh, Cesar just opened, uh, posted something to YouTube where he's doing quackle analysis. Benji is live tomorrow night. I encourage anybody watching who wants more Scrabble con uh, content to check out those streams. Um, Joey, give us your pick here. Where's the smart money? That's what I want to know. Yeah, so I think Sam made a pretty good pick there with Benji. Um, he wouldn't be my number one, but I think anyone, you know, in the first few uh, are smart, you know, so to speak, picks. So, yeah, Seth is a good pick. Uh, but I would go Carl Johnson here. I think he has the most upside. He has really good word knowledge. Uh, he's played for a while. Uh, he's been playing a little bit more this year, it looks like. And, um, yeah, I think he's probably just the best player in this group um, as far as likelihood to win the tournament. Um Love yeah, it. Uh, Jonathan Lind uh, likes Kenji with the hometown advantage. And uh, he also likes Josh Jr. in the second group. Adam Henderson likes Mike Fritz. Okay, let's move on quickly to the third group. We've got, so I'm, let's just, we're going to burn through this. Um, the person who stands out to me, I mean, look, you got Jack Peters on here. He's been on NASPA tonight before. Uh, he's a rising star, so I like him. But I kind of like, the person I like is Wes Eddings. I find Wes always performs big in big tournaments. Sam, who do you like on here? Who do you know? Who are you, who are you a fan of? I'm going to go Jack Peters, the rising star. All right, very good. Joey, what do you think? What are, what's the insider scoop here? What I'm are we excited. missing? A person might be cut off or two that I might not be giving good consideration, but I'm gonna go with Sid Morali. I think I think he is the most consistent, solid player in this group. Um, maybe he won't win the tournament, but he's really solid, and um, yeah, I, I have pretty good faith that he will represent Texas well. Okay, let's go to group number four. Uh, this one I'm just picking on heart. I am taking Dr. Ken. Uh, that's Ken Rubin. He's uh, appeared on this show before and is one of my favorite people to, um, I think I've roomed with Ken before. And there's nothing like, uh, no, maybe I haven't roomed with him. I can't remember. Yes, I did room with him. Um, and when I was at the Kingston tournament and I did something to my back, I was pretty much under a doctor's care the whole tournament. It was fantastic. So that's my pick is Dr. Ken. Sam, who do you like here and why? I'm going to go Stefan Fatsis just because of his oh, lot of prior course. experience here. Absolutely. Joey, any, any yeah. insights? Yeah. Um, I'll go with Dr. Ken also. Um, <laughs> I think he, he's trying pretty hard. Absolutely. But he hasn't played in a while. That's the only thing I'm going to say. Uh, we would have liked that to see... That your benefit sometimes. Mm, is that biased advice for when you come back? Not biased advice. That's just... <laughs> ten things tend to happen like the opposite of what you would think. You know, All right. Would, you know, All I want to say is it would have been nice to see Dr. Ken on July 4th. Okay. So let's go over to... Uh, div and now people get an idea of how this works. Like it's choose four and then you go through the four groups. So let's go to TWL, Division 2. We're going to burn through this. I think, oh, this is interesting because we've got Bryn Bowen, who also hasn't played in a while. He's, like, working hard. I know that. There's, uh, let's see. We've got Edwin Roth, who's been uh, mentioned on this show many, many times. There's, what's his name? I'm going to go Bryn Bowen 
uh, for this pick. Sam, anybody you like here? I like Ed Roth. He's, All right. uh, he's, been, he's been killing it himself. Very good. Joey, any insights? Yeah, uh, I think Ed Roth is a good pick for sure. Um, but I will go with Joe South. He's always doing pretty well at D2. Um, he just seems like a sharp guy. I'm pretty sure he's the one that played Astro something. Yeah, crazy. that's right. Astro, Astro, Astro Biology with a rack of AB IOST blank into ology. So, yeah, I have to pick Mr. Astro Biologist, uh, Joe South. There you go. And uh, I like Jonathan Lynn. You're, you're playing along. He gave us a group four pick for Division One, which was Michael Baker, who took a top 10 in nationals one year. So I like that. And Julia Bogle likes Darren True in this group. Let's go on to group two. And um, I, I mean, I, I'm going to go ahead and just pick Zach Ansel. He was crushing it this past weekend in, in July 4, but there are a lot of interesting names here. Sam? I was going to say Zach Ansel, but I'm going to have to go with... Um, I'm going to go Bob Becker. Oh, nice. I love it. I'm going to go for the under. I'm going to go for the underdog now. Listen, I, I love it. Do we have, I think Bob Be Becker is in the, com in the comments, so I love it. Oh, he is. <laughs> Playing to the crowd. All right, Joey, what do you like here? I love Bob Becker. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I have to go with Jack Ansel also. I hate to be a toppy cat, but, um, yeah, I think he uh, he's a superstar in the making. Okay, group three. So this is only group there are only three groups, so you can see that this is a very large group. All right, I'm going to focus on the top half. Uh, even though there are some interesting names below the fold, uh, some of my favorites being Beth Mix, uh, Paul Avrin. We got Noah Kalis, another youngster in here. They're all sort of in the in the middle zone. Um, but if I were going to make a pick, let's go with oh, this is a tough one. Uh, Sam, do you have a pick while I try to figure this out? Uh, all right. I'll, I'll choose fast. Um, I'm gonna go with the, I'm gonna go with the young guy Noah. Nice. Okay. And uh, Adam Henderson likes uh, Zach, Andy, and then Cooper. So Cooper Komatsu, he seems like <coughs> I'm gonna go ahead and pick Cooper. Joey, what do you like? Um, since you pick Cooper, I have to pick Rad V. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of a wild card. might not be good, but um, yeah, kind of just taking a flyer. Okay, let's move on to Division Three. I played all the Nationals I played in, I played in Division Three, So I feel like I'm the expert here. I'm going to, first of all, um, at, the, at the top here, Joseph Waldbaum, I'm not picking him to win, but I'm picking him to make the most jokes and tell the most jokes over the course of Nationals. Um, I think Ken Louie is a good player. Lindsey Shin is also a good player and has won a division at Nationals uh, before when we were in New Orleans. So my pick is going to be Lindsey. Um, I'm just surprised Lindsey's... Oh not playing Collins. But anyway, we'll pick I'm picking Lindsay and also to note uh okay, no. Everybody's in this group. Some of these groups there are still people that have to be weeded out like from one division to the other because of ratings. I just want to double check that. So, I'm yeah, going with Lindsay. Sam, what do you enough. think? I'm going to root for Evan to win division 3 and win another nationals Ooh. for I mean I mean this this guy has uh, just recently started posting his games on cross tables, and you know his his analysis of his own games is is very good and very honest. So you know if this guy can somehow win for the second year in a row, I'll be very impressed. So I'm I'm gonna put my money on him. All right, and coming in the bottom of the group, uh, Joey, what do you like here? Yeah, so I like uh, Sam's pick. Uh, he's not my number oh, one. Really, he's definitely. Um, yeah, that's a good pick. That's a smart money pick, like you said. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have to go with Doug Critchlow. He does really well at Nationals every year, and he apparently just saves himself. I uh, just plays once a year, and um, he's just milking it. And um, eventually he's just going to move up and up. And um, yeah, I think 
he's probably the favorite to win D3. There we go. And, okay, so here we go. First of all, I was wrong. It's, I think it's Bob Bolender who's with us in the comments. He's in this next group. It's not Bob Becker. You can see where I might have gotten confused. Um, but my pick here, God, there's some interesting, there's some interesting players here. I absolutely love Kevin Ng um, as a person and as a player. He's really been killing it this year. Um, but, and it's always, I, I'll tell you, it, it, I think that there are a lot of picks that go to these young players who are up and coming, and they certainly do not always win. Um, I also am a big fan of this Dustin Brown. Uh, I got a great interview from him in Poughkeepsie. But the player I like here, uh, who's maybe a sneaky pick, doesn't even have a picture on cross tables, but killed it in Albany, is Eric Salgado. That's my pick. Sam? I'm going to go with another up-and-coming player in Kevin Eng here. Um, if you don't pick Cornelia Guest, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm going <laughs> I'm, I'm to root for her as well. Don't you worry about that. She deserves... She deserves... <laughs> My support because she does a great job of getting me on the right track and helping me win. So I'm going to go with her as well. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Like a tie. That sounds like a tie to me. A tie, Joey. yes. Joey, who do you like here? Yeah, I'll go with Dustin Brown. All right, very good. And then we got a third group here, right? No, no. Oh, just two. Okay, good. Let's go to four quickly, and then we'll cover Collins after that. Um so this is group one of division four. Now, normally I would talk about Joe Gatz here, but he's obviously going to be uh, out of the division. Same yeah. with Henry Moses, right? They're going to be bumped up to group three. That's uh, uh, a funny story that, uh, oh, Adam had a, had a pick of uh, Ben Ansel in the last, uh, last division who really had a strong start at Albany, but finished just outside the prize zone. Um, I want to say Joe Gatz I, I, is one of my favorite interviews of all time, and it was like a 90-second interview or something like that. I've played it on NASPA Tonight before. Um, I love that guy. Um, but since he is going to be out of here, I'm going to just scroll down a little bit and see if there's anybody below the fold that stands out to me. Um, I like here... Let's see. This is a tough one, man. Division four is interesting because, oh, is there only one group? Yes. So you can pick anyone in this group. Yeah, my so, pick is uh, David Garcia, for what it's worth. He's played two tournaments, and he looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to go here uh, with Kevin Noble. And Sam, who do you like? Unfortunately, I don't know this group very well, except <laughs> Landers, who I met in Delaware two years ago. So I'm going to go with them, I'm gonna go with them just because those are... Who are you picking? I missed it. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, one of the Philandros because, you know, those <laughs> okay, are the people nice. that I know from this group who I met in Which Delaware one? Which ago. one? You're picking two when you only have one choice. All right. Uh, I'll go with Pete, but... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's move on to Collins quickly. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's where it gets really interesting. Uh, I'm going to take my position. Like, look, there's no question that Dave Wiegand, who has won two national championships, um, who's won, I believe, two Niagara Falls, uh, and is just an unbelievable player, like look at look at who's here. They're just like there's talent all over the place. But the guy who is absolutely rocking it this year is Jesse Day. I'm taking Jesse Day off the board. Sam, I'm gonna go with the proven champ, David Wiegand. Joey, well, if we're doing the off the board method, I guess that leaves me with Austin Shin because he's the well. Best break down ever. the break down picking from a okay. group like this. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Dave Weekend is Dave Weekend. Um, he is a robot. He's Dr. <laughs> Bing. He is a beast. But yeah, he's never won a Collins National since it started in whatever year, 10 years ago or whatever. And um, yep. no, not, no, sorry, it was 2013. So it's actually been right. kind of a short history. So he's got to win one. You would think this will be the one. That's what I think every year. 
Um, but yeah, so he's definitely the favorite. So he's the best pick technically, but you know, uh, Je- yeah, Jesse is also you know perfectly fine too. All right, and much love to Keller, many time guest on this show. Um, let's take a look at Group Two because there's some real interesting action here. Um, look, a popular pick in this group, a super popular pick is going to be Matt O'Connor. And I'm a big fan of, of all the O'Connors. All right. Especially working with Kieran. Matt's extremely helpful when we run that event. I'm going to let one of you guys pick Matt. I think Matt's going to do great, but here's where I'm going to go anti youth movement. All right. See, we've also got Josh Castellano, uh, or as I like to call him other Josh. Um, but I'm my money's on Tony Leah. Tony is a player who uh, is not in the in the young group, but he has great performances and continues to get better, no matter what his age is. Uh, and I can I can uh, clarify that he is uh, he may be old, but he's young at heart. All right, Sam, who do you like here? I'm gonna I'm gonna go with. Um... Uh, I'm going to go Pete Armstrong. All right. You go out of the ordinary here. Uh, I think he's in the other group. Or am I tripping? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, he's in Division One. Yeah. So you uh, got my, a... my, my, fault, my fault. My fault. Group two. Um, sorry. Or maybe this will help. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. One too many. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Puneet Sharma in this one. Mm, Puneet. Big Pats fan. All right. Uh, Joey. What do you think about this group? Yeah, I think, yeah, like you said, you let one of us pick Matthew O'Connor. I think um, he just is always getting better. Um, he learns like a sponge. And, um, yeah, he's uh, always subject to just explode and win all his games. So I think he's a good player. Love it. Okay. And uh, I guarantee you, he. I feel like he's going to be on 75% and, of the entries. Yeah. And another thing, Josh, I don't think you should be calling people old. I didn't call him old. I called him young and hurt. You called Tony old. I just wanted to call you out. Listen, him old. I love Tony. <laughs> I love Tony. He's my club mate. Um, All right, sorry, Jermon. Just keep going. You're right, but you're right. Absolutely. Uh, he's a seasoned player. How about that? Um, okay, let's go with group three here. Um, listen, I, there are some people in here that I love. Um, I would think that there's some there's probably some money to be made uh, for going with the young Noah Slatkoff, who I believe is in the comments, uh, who's been on an unbelievable rise. But I'm going to let you guys go for the youth movement. Um, you know, one of my other favorites here is Jason Ubica. I featured him on the show and called him one of the nicest guys in Scrabble. I want to I want to throw out an accomplishment for Jason. He and I, um, last summer, I believe, set the land speed record from uh, Toronto to Albany in five hours and 20 minutes. And then he went and beat it this year. Five hours and 13 minutes he made it down there. It took us it took us seven and a half hours to get back. Just so a quick note. All right, I'm picking James Curley here. Um, and he's been on the show, yes. But I like this guy. And... Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's my pick. Sam? I'm going to go with the youth movement again, Noah Slotkoff. <laughs> and, Joey, break it down for us. Who? Where do you think there's money to be made here? Yeah, so I like the Noah pick for sure. Um, he's definitely up and coming, no doubt about it. Um, so if I have to pick someone else, I guess I would go with Man Up. He just played in King's Cup also, so he's not going to be too rusty. But, um, yeah, I think he might be the strongest player in this group. So gotcha. That's how it goes. So that's how you fill out a bracket. That took a little while to get through, but we're going to surprise you with one other thing. I just got to get to this for a second. Um, and I, I'm going to try to go back through this broadcast and recreate who our picks were. Uh, and maybe post um, something about that. But in the meantime, let's get to, uh, this is really interesting. Now, these are some odds 
to win um, TWL and CSW. So these are mostly for fun. Um, I'm going to figure out how to put this up here. Let me just... Maybe just one at a time is better? Yeah, yeah. No, we're going to put it one at a time. Okay. I am going to audio only. So here, this is the best way to display it. So if you look down the center column there, uh, Jackson Smiley uh, is a... Uh, Uh-oh, what happened? Did I lose it? No, okay. Jackson Smiley... Maybe take um, our heads out, Josh, and make it full screen. Is that possible? No, it's not going to make it any bigger. Okay. That's why I put it in between. So, okay, here's the way the favorites break down here. Um, these are odds that were put together for fun, right? Um, yes. And if you're interested in these odds, you can contact Joey directly. He's the one who put them together. So if we go for favorites, we've got Will Anderson sitting at 3-1. to one. Kenji at five to one, Jackson at six to one. So Jackson has slipped to third. I still think you're not making any money on those picks. Rafi at eight to one. And then 10 to one, we've got Alec. And then we start to get into, we've got 12 to ones with Ori Swift and Joey Malik. And 15 to one, Carl Johnson. Right. And then it goes up from there. So here's a question for you, Sam. If you had $20, where do you see value in this? Like, is it putting money on Will to try to win 60 bucks, Or you pick Joey Malik to win. That $20 could get you 240 bucks. So where do you, if you were making a pick here, I don't know how well you can see the odds. Mm-hmm. Um, I can see what, uh, what do you like here? I think I'd still go with... Slightly more of a long shot because I feel like any one of those two could really pull it out. Right. Absolutely. So, and that's a great return. Like I, I would love to throw, uh, what, 10 bucks on Cesar. And if he won, then I would take home 400 bucks and I would mm-hmm. feel extremely good. Um, so <laughs> Joey, uh, tell us about these and where do you think that there's a value? Also explain how the field works. Yeah, so on this graphic, the field bet isn't displayed, but you have all the people that are given odds, and then everyone else in the field is combined into one bet. It's a field yep. bet, and that is an up list on here, like I said. But anyway, so yeah, I am obsessed with math and sports and then odds and Scrabble. So when you combine all those things, um, me and other math- mathematicians like to look at data and do these kind of things. Um so we're able to draw these up. And last year, I started doing this with making my odds. And this is completely different from the Roto. This is just something I do for fun. Like you said, if someone's just interested in one of these, message me. And um, that's fine. But yeah, so separate from the Roto, the Roto is its own thing. That's been going on for 10 years, however long. But yeah, this is just something uh, for fun. And yeah. um, So yeah. did you tell us where you think there's value here? Yeah, so if I was betting on my own odds, which isn't, I know, which is kind of a weird concept, but yeah, um, <laughs> I guess yeah, I think the smart money bet would probably be yeah, I guess Joey Malik twelve to one. I mean, there are some real bet. interesting picks here, right? Like, look at Matt Canick at a hundred to one. Like, yeah, he told could... me to send that. He, he told me to do that. <laughs> I, I he, he told me to dock him. I also think the field bet is kind of interesting because, uh, well, but I think for group two, I liked Wes Eddings or group three or something. Um, but there are some other interesting ones. Uh, look at these. Okay, this is, I, I got to say, there's something crazy going on here. Oh, oh, I got confused. Okay, the Renke brothers, 25 to 1 and 35 to 1. I don't know how you can't equal those odds because no one can tell the difference between them. I can tell the difference on their <laughs> annotated games. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sam, any other thoughts here? Uh, I know we've got um, Adam Henderson in the, uh, in the comments. He likes, uh, he likes Kenji. He's got a good feeling uh, for Kenji. 
Um, I don't know. What do you think about Kenji? Hometown hero. <laughs> I think he'll have a shot with him, you know, being in his hometown. And, you know, again, he, he has a legitimate shot at winning this thing, in my opinion. And I feel like it's really anyone's game. And he's finished second in one of these before. Is that he right, has. Kelly? Yeah. He okay. has. I believe he has. Beauty. And uh, um, also, Scott Appel. I, I, 35 to 1 odds. Um, there's something I like about that. And I got to mention Chris Cree. I mean, he's, he's, he's going to win one of these one day. It could be this one. 60 to 1 odds. That is a slap in the face, Joey. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, a lot of good players here, okay? That's true. Okay. Let's uh, move on. Let me get to the other one. First of all, uh, I'll just come back while I set this up. And then let's get to, we've got the same thing going for Collins, and then we're going to wrap this show up, okay? Because we've been this is, we've been going, all right? Um, let me find the Collins one. Hey, it's Nationals time, man, you know? I know, and, and I, I want to mention that next week, um, we should have an all-star lineup on NASPA tonight. Um, and we're still kind of making some of those uh, decisions on which guests are going to be coming in. Uh, there, a few of our top players are all going to be on a road trip together. So we may miss a cut. Like, I don't think Jackson's going to be able to make it on next week or Josh Jr. Um, but we're, we're going to have an all-star lineup next week. And it'll, it'll definitely be a longer show. Um, let's get into the uh, Collins um, odds here. So obviously the favorite, we've got uh, Wiegand at 3-1. to one. We've got Jesse Day at 4-1. to one. We've got Austin at 5-1. to one. That looks pretty good to me. Keller sitting at strong, 7-1. to one. Peter Armstrong, 10. Most of this is pretty chalky. I got I to gotta say that, uh, Joey. Um, yeah, Collins, uh, the turnout this year was pretty low for Collins, so it's not a lot of... Um... Do, do you think that makes it more predictable? Yes. Okay. So so that's the way like this Dave, works. I mean, Dave should be two to one probably, but like, you know, whatever. Gotcha. You got to make it attractive. There, there's a whole science to odd settings. Would you say that's true? Yes, there is. There's science okay. to everything in life, actually. <laughs> um. So, again... Listen, four to one odds. I love the streak that Jesse Day is on. So I could see throwing uh, some money, probably more money on that. And then on the extreme end, I mean, I don't know. Do you think like out of nowhere, Noah Slatkoff could win this? That'd be crazy. But 50 to one odds, <laughs> 50, 50 to one, to one odds. Nice. That's pretty it's crazy. It's unreasonable. <laughs> Go ahead, Sam. Where, where do you like... Uh, you see any odds here that you like? Uh, I'm not uh, finding anything uh, that's outrageous. I mean, I don't. Uh, I'm not an expert with setting odds on people, so I'm not sure how to critique that. I'm saying if you've got twenty bucks, where are you <laughs> putting it? Thinking about what are your chances to win anything, or or throw your money away, or hit a big score. Like Matthew O'Connor is going to obviously return 280 bucks if he comes mm -hmm. through with the win. Where Dave Wiegand, you know, as Adam Henderson says, um, you know, uh, this is Wiegand's tournament to lose. Uh, that's like, you know, you get 60 bucks. Like Adam Henderson is like guaranteeing that result. So mm -hmm. this is the balance that that we're that we're taking. I believe you selected Matthew for the second one. So where would you see throwing 20 bucks, Sam? Again, I would go slightly below the uh, leading people. So I think I'd go like Peter Armstrong or um, Josh Castellano in this mm. case. You know, Yeah, we call him I feel Like I said, I feel like they have a legitimate shot, but they're not – they're not like at the bottom or anything like that. So I can obviously get a nice return if one of those people win. Okay. And, and uh, Joey, where do you think, I'll ask you this, Joey, what do you think the most common bet is going to be here? It's on Dave, right? Mm, yeah. It hasn't really picked up yet. 
because I haven't really been okay. putting it out like that. No, I'm uh, saying, sorry, yeah, I mean I predicting, yeah. predicting. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I would have to guess. Yeah, I'm Dave or Jesse. Yeah, yeah, I think that makes sense. And Jesse likes to bet on himself. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I also, I also love that uh, Martin Demello is not in the field. He set at seventy-five to one. I'm a uh, I'm yeah. a big He's big fan of Martin. If you want to feel good, um, follow him on Facebook. Uh, become friends with him on Facebook, and there's all this great stuff. It, it's stuff that'll make you uh, love the Earth and hate the Earth at the same time. Like it's a real there's a split going on there. Uh, but I've I've talked with him about being on NASPA tonight. I don't know whether we're going to make that happen. I'll probably try to make that happen in uh, in Reno. But I think for me, Martin Demello represents or could represent uh, uh, our Scrabble community's conscience. So I want to throw that out there, um, guys. I want to thank you for your time tonight, viewers. I want to thank you for watching along. We've got way, we've got an hour and 10 minutes. Um, there's a lot of stuff to talk about. We want to encourage you to fill out your bracket um, if you're not playing in Reno. If you're playing in Reno, all the more reason uh, to do that. Um, you know, one year, the Roto. Scrabble.com. Yeah, right. So it's charlottescrabble.com slash Roto. Is that the site, Joey? Yeah, and like I said, run by ride for sure he does a really good job the site is really nice and user friendly and um yeah go check it out it's pretty fun very good okay and we're going to be back next week with a star studded lineup uh for the last show before nationals um you know listen i want everybody to go to nationals but at the same time i always say um adam we just said it, charlottescrabble.com slash roto. We'll post links to it, right? Joey, can you take care of posting links in Facebook? And I will post it when I put the show on YouTube later tonight. Um, Sam, really great to meet you. Thanks for being on the show. I expect to have you. I expect to have you on the show uh, again. And even though I got it wrong that you were attending your first NASC, mm -hmm. I hope that happens very, very soon, like next year. <laughs> one more thing. One more thing. One more Joey, thing. go ahead. Also, yeah, um, since you said that, that reminded me. I don't think I mentioned it anywhere in this broadcast, but this is the first time since 2006 that I'm not going to be at the Nationals. So this right. is like, like amazing. Like I, I'm going to be sitting, watching the live coverage and going hardcore fanboy. Beautiful. Well, that's a pretty amazing run. That's like 14 in a row, 13 in a row, 13. Um, that's pretty awesome. And we're, we're going to miss you this year. Uh, I want to say um, that after the last one in Reno, uh, Joey, you and I drove to Vegas together uh, along with. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, that was a hell of a lot of fun. We had fun on that trip. Okay. Um, thanks very much, guys. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Support your local directors. They're working hard for you. We'll see you next week with a star-studded lineup. The show may start an hour early. Watch Facebook for details. Okay. And that is going to do it. Where's my end credit? Oh, there goes Joey. All right. Good night, everybody. <laughs> good night, Josh. <laughs> Uh, that's going to do it this week. That's going to be our end credit is Scrabble Cat. And it was really nice to see everybody. Have a good week.